Well, we've looked at how to create new files, upload files, delete files, make some new branches, um, and we're going to work with pull requests a little later. But for the time being, I feel like we've really hammered out how to use the web GUI interface, and I'd like to look at how we can now download this and use this from uh, our um, command line as well as from third-party tools like Git Kraken. So, uh, if we wanted to download this and just use it once, of course you could just download the zip right here, or you can grab this code right here and use it to download. And so, um, we are going to utilize this method and we're going to set up uh, Git in our Git folder. So we're going to change directory. I've got the terminal open here to uh, git playground. And we see we have our new file text in there. And I want to work with a few tools and see how we can utilize this better. So I've got this highlighted, which means now I can middle click to insert it. And I want to git clone. And I'm middle clicking to insert all of that. So I'm going to uh, use the tool of git <clears throat> and I'm going to clone this repository. What happens when we do that? <clears throat> Excuse me. We see now we have our GitHub 101 folder. Inside we have file 1, file 3, license and readme. <clears throat> We're going to uh, get into our folder and we see the same thing. Now. I'm going to show you some magic. We know that this is the master branch. So did we only download the master branch? Well, not exactly. Because we git cloned it, <coughs> all of it is actually there. If we type git branches, oops, git branch, we see that we have the master branch. Um, then uh, we don't have is the other branches. But don't be alarmed just because uh, you only see the one. If you type git branch dash a for all, we see that we have some other ones. So here we have our new idea file. So you can git branch, let's see, how do we do this? Git check out branch uh, new idea file let's try it that way okay so get check out new idea file now notice as soon as I did that things changed up here uh, you see that we have file one license new file readme and now if I type git branch right it shows that I'm on new idea file and there's still master so I can git check out master and there we go we see the magic again now we have file one file three license and readme but no new file and once again back to check out our new idea file and there we go, it changes to match. So all of that, if we push control H, is hidden in this git folder, which has all the different branches and the information and the objects. And you know, you look at the objects and it's just some numerous uh, numeral gibberish, right? Doesn't really help you any, but those are compressed versions of all the files that you need. We'll go ahead and go back to unhidden or to hide those again so you can look at what we have. So right now we'll type git branch and we're on the new idea file branch and so that's the one that we're working with and uh, let's go ahead and go back to the master branch. Git checkout master, git branch, we can see we're on the master, we have our file 1, file 3, license and there everything is. So it can be a little bit confusing 
and hopefully all of this will make more sense when we look at the tools like uh, Git Kraken, um, which will really uh, spell this out for us here. But I just want you to be aware, like, we can go to the command line, we can change our branch that we're working with. Now, let's say I want to make a new file. So I'm in here and I'm going to make a new document, empty document. We'll call this uh, um, some file.txt, right? And we're going to open that with gedit and we're like, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And we'll save that file. So now we have changed something. We now have more material than what we have online. So get status shows us that we have this extra file, right? And it says if we want to add this untracked file, we need to use git add and then the file name. So you can do this several ways. You can say git add and we can use a dot for source, meaning everything in this directory. We can say, uh, you know, git add some file dot text if we just want to add that one and not everything, right? So we've now added that. And whenever we add something, then we have to commit it. So it's this process. We've, we've made a new file. We're going to add that file to our list of files that we're going to track. And now we're going to commit it. Git commit. And we typically give a message. And this is just like in the web GUI when we were typing something in. This commit message, in our case, we're going to say uh, made some file. Right? Now this has been committed locally to our local repository. But this has still not been added to our web interface. Like if we refresh this page, it's not in here because we haven't pushed it to the website yet. So we made a new file, we get add that file, we get commit that file, and now we're going to get push that file. Now, sometimes it's good to specify where you want it to go. You could say you want it to go to origin master, right? Um, origin space master uh, to say you want it to go to there. Um, sometimes you can just say get push, but it'll ask you where you want to push it to, right? In this case, it knows that you have cloned it to this, so you want to do that. But if you wanted to push it to like a different branch, you could do that. So we're going to uh, type in our user information. And now it is sending that information over the internet through the World Wide Web and getting it to your GitHub. So now, let's take a look. If I refresh this page, look there, there's our some file and we've got an extra commit now. Make, made some file, and there it is. So, we can do the same thing that we did in the web GUI from the command line. And we can work it in reverse as well. We can say, you know what, we don't need file number three. So let's remove file three. So now that's gone. So if we check our git status now, it's like, whoa, whoa, you know, uh, you were up to date, but then you removed a file. So um, this is not staged for commit. So you need to, to um, commit this. So you can use git add or git commit all, right? In this case, we want to git add. And you could just say git remove the file or git add the file. Um, what I like to do in cases like this is to use all to say, hey, I deleted something. I want you to uh, be aware of that, right? There's some different ways to do this, and uh, you're welcome to read up on all of them. But I've said, hey, I deleted something. I want to add that commit. So you, you make your change. You add your change. You commit your change. Uh, deleted unused file and then you push 
your change. Helps if I type my password right. So, now we check our git status and we are working directory is clean. We go here, we refresh our page, we see that file is gone, there's another commit. Hey, we deleted that unused file and load the diff, this file was removed. So again, we're doing the same thing from the command line that we were doing in the uh, web interface. And you can change to different branches like we just looked at. Uh, you can send things to different branches and it works the same way as before. So just wanted you to be aware of that. That's how you can do it from the command line. Um, as you get into doing a lot of uh, compiling, this will become pretty handy way to get things done.